Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our tribute to our good friend Mike Ansaldua by the Del Mar College Music Department. My name is David Irving, and I'll be your master of ceremonies this evening. And we also want to welcome our radio listeners on KEDT-FM and KVRT-FM. The music you'll hear this evening will be performed by Del Mar College music faculty and students. And since some of the music comes from the 19th century, please help us maintain the historical integrity of the evening by silencing your cell phones, pagers, nuclear detonators, and other electronic <laughs> devices. Now let's get right to the music. To play Jay Unger's Ashokan Farewell, please welcome Todd Ale.
student ensemble on this recital, Mariachi Del Mar, directed by Glenn Garcia. They're here this evening because Mike Ansaldua was instrumental and vocal too, of course, in getting this ensemble established here at Del Mar. And now performing Aire de Samba by Agustin Barrios, here is Philip He. Thank you. 
As some of you know, one of the motives that drove Mike Ansaldua was a simple one. He just wanted everything to be the very best it could. And if that meant postponing his retirement or doing extra work, then that's what he'd do. But Mike didn't consider extra duty an imposition because he loved Del Mar and he loved his work. A lot of us suspected that his ideal vacation would have been a cruise to the Del Mar English building where he could teach a class or grade papers. <laughs> Next you'll hear Sonata Number no. 2 in A Minor by Nikolai Mieskowski. Meet Susan Sturman and David Sutanto.
Next, you'll meet two of Mike's colleagues from the English department. Sarah Kaplan will be reading The Sage from Stephen Crane's collection, The Black Riders and Other Lines. And John Crisp will read Erosion by Marshall. Please welcome Sarah Kaplan and John Crisp. So um, this is a poem um, that Mike liked quite a bit. It's from um, Stephen Crane's uh, The Black Riders and Other Lines. And um, it's called The Sage. And um, this poem um, reminds me that, um, that Mike, in his simplicity, was complexity. And in his complexity was simplicity. And here is the sage. The sage lectured br brilliantly. Before him, two images. Now, this one is a devil, and this one is me. He turned away. And then, a cunning pupil changed the positions, turned the sage again. Now, this one is a devil, and this one is me. The pupil sat, all grinning, and rejoiced in the game. But the sage was a sage. Thank you. I will read a short poem about a little girl who died more than 2,000 years ago. The poet is Marshall, who was born and grew up on the Iberian Peninsula, but who lived in Rome and wrote in Latin. In the poem, Marshall asks his parents, who are already dead, to look after the spirit of the little girl. And he asks the ghosts and shades to comfort her because she might be afraid as she arrives in the underworld. More than 20 years ago, when Mike was the chair of the English department, philosophy department, a senior professor's 10-year-old daughter, granddaughter, died. Her grief was profound. So Mike made the sweet gesture of distributing this poem to her and to the department. <clears throat> the poem is a little sad, and maybe even melancholy. But I think that Mike meant it to serve as a small consolation to the bereaved and to the department because it taps into some of the timeless and universal sentiments that Mike appreciated in great poetry. I suspect that Mike would like it if it served that purpose here. And perhaps you'll see that the poem's sentiments are appropriate to Mike as well as to Erosion, the little girl in Marshall's poem, because while Mike wielded considerable beneficent influence on his colleagues and at the college, he himself walked lightly among us, quiet, reserved, unpretentious, and unpresumptuous. So, in his honor, I read from this English and Philosophy Department memo dated June 15th, 1993. After announcing the death of our colleague's uh, granddaughter and conveying the particulars of the funeral arrangement, Mike writes, with Marshall, I lament. And then he typed out this point. Thou, mother dead, and thou, my father's shade, to you I now commit the gentle maid. Erosion, my little love, my sweet. Let not her shuddering spirit fear to meet the ghosts, but soothe her lest she be afraid. How should a baby heart be undismayed to pass the lair where Severus is laid. 
The little six-year maiden gently greet. Dear reverend spirits, give her kindly aid and let her play in some Elysian glade, lisping my name sometimes, and I entreat, lie softly on her kindly earth, her feet, such tiny feet, on thee were lightly laid. Thanks. In the heat of the moment, if poetry can have a heat of the moment, you should read more poetry. You may not have noticed John Crisp's outfit. John, would you step out here for a minute? He very thoughtfully and appropriately wore a Mike Ansaldua suit. I was going to wear a coat and tie, but decided to come in costume. <laughs> the song you're about to hear was first sung in its current state in 2009 at the celebration party for Mike Ansaldua's alleged retirement. We knew he wasn't really going to do it. But in its original state, it was a love song. It was a, sort, of a, sort of a cryptic love song. You had to work really hard to hear it, but it's a love song nonetheless. But for Mike's party, I changed the words a little bit, giving him a little bit of uh, fond and sarcastic farewell. And I thought about changing the lyrics for this occasion, but I just couldn't do it. Because like a lot of you, I suspect, I have trouble thinking of Mike in any other way, but that he's just stepped out of the room and we'll be back any moment. I'll be joined on piano by Shaoshan Chen. The name of the song is Here's to Mike. And 
And you should know that we all miss you more than words can tell. The Del Mar Brass Trio is Scott Haggerty Trumpet, Carl Cam Horn, and Donald Penson Trombone. You'll hear them perform a Philharmonic Fanfare by Eric Ewazen and Fantasy by Alan Hovannis. The Del Mar Brass Trio. Thank you. 
Here to play Robert Schumann's Wiedmung once again is David Sutanto. things that many of us admired about Mike Ansaldua was that he was an eminently capable individual. He could just find out what needed to be done and see that it happened. If something needed to be done, he would just do it or cause it to be done or at least make us believe that it had been done. And sometimes the music department was the beneficiary of his abilities. For instance, right after Mike became dean, the music department suddenly discovered that it needed about $5,000 to replace some computers that had committed suicide. <laughs> and it like I said, about $5,000, and our department chair back then, Tammy Berger, went to Mike and asked if he could find us the money. And we were on a very tight budget back then. Wow, deja vu. <laughs> and so he thought about it for a minute, and he said, well, I can't promise anything, but I'll see what I can find. 
And the next day, it wasn't even 24 hours, Mike came to Tammy's office and proudly announced, Tammy, I found your $50,000. And Tammy was stunned. She said, Mike, we don't need $50,000. I asked you for $5,000. And Mike looked blank for a little bit, and then he said, oh, well, okay then, I found your $5,000. <laughs> Next, you'll hear Lament by Chaim Paramount. Please welcome Bill Lippman.
Our final performance of this evening is Aaron Copeland's El Salon, Mexico. Here once again are David Sutanto and Shaoshan Chen.
Surprisingly, both of them had their first piano lesson last week. <laughs> well, thank you for being here to the Del Mar College Music Department's tribute to my consul duo. We hope you enjoyed the performance. On your way out, please consider making a contribution to the Mike Ansel Dua Scholarship Fund, and we would like you to join us in the patio room for a reception. We hope to see you there. Once again, thank you and good night. <laughs>